I see you guys looking at the title of my slide and wonder, this is perfect English. I understand the words, but the sentence makes no sense whatsoever. Hopefully it will by the end of this talk. Now, often when we talk about climate change, there's a high probability that at one point or another in a conversation, somebody will mention something about temperature change. Uh, for example, look at these uh, examples for, uh, from uh, various high quality media outlets to make this point. Here we have boiling and heat wave in one sentence. It's a classical global warming. And here uh, things get creative, referring to the planet as a hothouse. Either way, uh, to be more serious, temperature is the indicator of climate change. And it's also reflected by the most important policy target that we have on the planet to make sure that our planet does not warm um, too much, which is the Paris Agreement, uh, which says that the Earth should preferably not warm beyond one and a half or two degrees. So the one and a half degree target. And as you can see here, the roadmap towards that target is pretty unclear. There's a huge bit of green there. Now, one of the main reasons that there is a bit of unclarity on how to reach this target. It's because the models, the climate models that we use to say something about the future, are parameterized, they're calibrated using weather observations. But what lies ahead exceeds the range of that very short observational time span. And therefore, people, sci climate scientists like me, look at temperatures from past geological intervals, known as paleo temperatures. Now, to explain a little bit why we do this, I would like you to take a look at this figure, which shows the global temperature since the day that T-Rex went extinct, all the way to today, the Tesla era. And if you look more carefully, you see there's quite a few periods in uh, the geological past where temperatures were much warmer than today, and in fact, same rates and range as what we can expect for the 21st century. So in a way, deriving information about temperatures from geological archives that cover these periods is the next best thing to a crystal ball. It offers us a glimpse into that uncertain future and helps us improve these models that we use. And this potential the, to use the past to say something about the unsure future has been acknowledged for quite some time. In fact, many of the approaches that are used to say something about past temperatures, and they're known as paleothermometers, have been around for quite some time. This is the oldest uh, tree rings. Already in the 1850s, people discovered that the width of these rings were correlated to the, the summer temperatures. More recently, looking at the environmental preference of plants and using fossil pollen to say something about past temperatures. Quite a similar approach from the 90s and onwards, using flies in lakes and to the present, and also to my research, using fat. Yes, you read that correctly, fat. But not just any fat, no. Fat produced by a very particular type of, uh, of algae, a family of algae um, that lives in lakes and in the sea. And the general idea is that in order to maintain, to make sure that these fats stay solid, even as the environmental temperature change, they build and break the double bonds that I try to highlight here. A process known as saturation or unsaturation, based in which direction it goes. The general idea is that these algae do this to prevent turning liquid on a warm summer day. So they need to build and break these double bonds to make sure that they uh, stay solid. And generally you can say that the more double bonds these molecules have, the more unsaturated they are, and the more liquid they are under room temperatures. So, when things get warmer, these uh, molecules need to saturate. They need to break these double bonds to make sure that they stay solid. And to demonstrate this, I'm showing some data as I would look at it in the lab from the instrument, and I compare two sites here in northern Norway and in Arctic Svalbard. So warm, and cold, and when you look here, you can see that the site in northern Norway has a much higher relative abundance of molecules that contains only two of these double bonds, and therefore it reflects warmer temperatures. So the great thing about these fats is that they are preserved for millions of years in geological records around the world. So very much look forward, better uh, explaining and understanding the past to learn something about the future by finding and analyzing these fats in exciting sites around the world.